Good morning. Welcome to this session in which we would be talking about geographic information system that is GIS. So let's first understand what is geographic information system and why do we really need it. So we'll start with understanding the basic concepts in GIS. So let's start. When we talk about GIS, we have any uh, image, let's say any remote sensing image which have, we have acquired through satellite imagery and I have a picture of it. Supposedly this is a remote sensing imagery that I have. Now what do I exactly need on it? I do not know which areas or which points on the earth they exactly match with. So what I need to do is I need to georeference it. And what does the word georeferencing means? Georeferencing means I would try to match the latitudes and longitudes on this imagery with the exact locations on the earth. So when I try to do this, I can say, for example, this imagery is of the downtown region of New York, for example. So I can predict this only if I have georeferenced it. And that georeferencing comes by marking the latitudes and longitudes as per the projection of the region. So what we try to do here is we have the information which is based on the computers and what I try to do is I try to digitally represent that information or I try to represent whatever information I have on computers and then what I try to do is I try to analyze the geographical features. So while doing this, there are layers in GIS. What, are, what does this mean? So the first layer is the imagery or the actual uh, remote sensing data or the data from the topo sheet which I have acquired. The next is the map showing the level of elevations. The next is showing the water patterns or the river patterns or the hydrography. The next we talk about administrative areas. We have the land use and finally the streets. So if I overlap all these, I will get something what is on the real earth. So what does GIS do? GIS, according to Arnoff, who was one of the most popular persons who worked with GIS, he said, you need four sets of data to handle anything which is georeferenced. What does that mean? The first set is input. The second set is management of that input. Then is manipulation of that input. We try to analyze and finally we try to find the output of that. So that is what are the basic elements that are required for any GIS. When we talk about layers in GIS, the main element understanding the layers is you make a logical separation and that separation helps you to understand the concept of GIS or any information that is onto the maps. Now, what are the real benefits of using GIS? First is visual impact. Since I have a visual impact, I can say, oh, okay, this is the main uh, transport network that goes through the city. Okay, this is the region which has uh, residential settlement. This is the region which has industrial settlement. So I can have visual impact and I can get to know a lot of things just by seeing or visualizing. So it's very useful for a layman, if you provide a GIS inventory uh, information, it's very useful for a layman. Then I can do analytical reasoning or analytical analysis of projects on this. I can share information. So it can provide information sharing. And finally is spatial analysis. What does a spatial analysis mean? You can integrate various divergent and convergent functions. So whatever is on this space, you can try to integrate it on paper. Now, let's move forward to understand the further concepts in GIS. So we'll start with understanding the types of information we acquire in GIS. So when we talk about types of information we try to analyze in GIS, first is location of anything. So what is it? What is it at? Or the location it's at the national highway it's along the riverside so what's the location the second thing we try to analyze is identification under identification we talk about where is it located 
third is pattern in pattern we usually talk about what is the spatial pattern what is the pattern of arrangement of houses or what is the real way in which houses are arranged the next is trend when we talk about trend we say how things have changed so it talks about temporal phenomena so 1970s what was the scenario 1980s and 1990s what was the scenario so this talks about the trend and lastly what we can analyze using gis is modeling modeling implies what if what if means uh, what if the elevation was more than the exact elevation of 500 meters or something like that so what if this happened what would be the scenario of the region so whenever we talk about GIS, we have two components. The first component is the spatial component, and the next component is the aspatial component. The spatial component means whatever is there on the space. Whatever is there on the space means the number of post offices, number of uh, streets, number of houses, whatever is there geographically located on the space, the rivers flowing through, that is all spatial. Then what is A spatial? A spatial is, for example, how many number of people are employed in the GIS project. That is not related to exact geography of the region, but that is something which does not require the knowledge of the space. It's besides the space. So when we talk about the spatial and A spatial phenomena, we have uh, the data sets which are respect in respect to spatial and A spatial phenomena. So let's understand the data sets now. So data sets, as we can see, is again of two types, spatial and attribute. So under spatial, what is there is, you have four kinds of data sets. You have point, line, area, and continuous. Point is post office locations, that is a point. Houses, those are point. Line is the uh, transport arteries in the region. Area is all the residential settlements, all the industrial settlements, all the commercial settlements. And continuous is what is continuously happening over the period. So these all are understood by means of spatial data. Now what is attribute data? Attribute data is any property that is associated to data. For example, if I say point, Point A is post office. Okay, so that is the spatial information. And attribute is this post office is the head post office or the main post office of the region. All the rest of the post offices are subordinate post offices. So that's what is the attribute associated to that post office or that's the property. And that is the attribute or I can say it is a spatial in nature. It's not a spatial in nature. So these are the kinds of data we understand in GIS. Now, before we go further, let's understand the basic characteristics and components of GIS. So the characteristics involves use of data. There should be a user who must be working on that data. Then there should be a system, a laptop, a computer, or a desktop where the person is working. Now that system should have both the components. There should be a hardware unit on which you are working and there should be a software unit. There are a lot of softwares which are used with GIS. The common ones are ArcGIS or EDAS. Imagine, so these are the common softwares that you use. Now, while understanding the components, we'll need to have all the characteristics that we discussed. So we must have the hardware, we must have the software, we must have the data. Besides that, you must know the method to do the GIS processing. Then there should be people or the users, as we said above, who are technically skilled to do that job. Now let's understand the subsystems in GIS. If I talk about any subsystem in GIS, what is important? First of all, what I would be doing is I have a data. I would be processing that data. When I would be processing, there would be three stages. There should be acquisition of data. I'm acquiring data from someone somewhere. I'm inputting that into the <coughs> system. And finally, I am storing. So input is by DBMS, that is database management software. So anything which is stored in the form of Excel sheet, CSV, 
it can be converted into DBF files, which is the most standard uh, format for data. Then I am storing that data somewhere. Now what is the next that I am doing? I am trying to analyze that data. To, for analysis, what I need is retrieval of information. So first I am retrieving the information that I have, I have already input. And then you are getting the output of the information based on that retrieval. Then finally, for all this, you need management. What is management? There are three stages of management. You have organizational role. You must have a staff who is working on it. And you must have a set of procedures that should be followed for that management. Okay, So you have these three stages. You have processing, analysis, and management. Now, there is a very important and interesting concept in data analysis that is um, understanding the linkages and the matching. What, is, what does that mean? Understanding relationships in data. So when I talk about relationships in data, what does that mean? Relationships in data can be of two types. First is linkage method and second is matching. What is linkage? Linkage is, if I say, in a specific region, I want to find out the mortality rate of mortality rate of children under 10 years of age due to a specific virus that is prominent in that region. So what I am trying to do, I am trying to link mortality rate with age group. Okay, So that is what does I am trying to do in the linkage. So I am linking mortality rate and age group. Now next is matching. Matching is a bit different from linkage. Linkage I am trying to relate to phenomena. Matching what I am trying to do. Matching can be of two types, exact and non-exact. What is exact matching? Exact matching means I have city A, city B and city C. I have the population of the region. For example, 1500. 2500 and um, 3500. Okay, this is one table I have. In the next table, I have the income in that region. So, for example, if the income I say is 3000, 5000, and 7000. Okay, now, I have two tables for three cities. One shows the population, other shows the income. In exact matching, what I would do, since this data is exactly matching with the population and income, I have A, B, and C. I have their population, I have their income. So what happens is, I can find the per capita income. So per capita income would be population per uh, population by total income. So I will find out the values here. So it would be the exact values of 0.5 in all the cases. But what is important here is I am matching three cities. I have the population for all the three cities and I have the income for all the three cities. So I can calculate per capita income for all the three cities. Okay. So that is what is exact matching. Now what would happen in non-exact matching? Non-exact matching is of two types. Hierarchical and fuzzy. What is meant by hierarchical? Hierarchical is, for example, in within the city A, I can say I have three blocks, one, two, and three, and each block has a population of 500. Now, if I want to calculate the per capita income, what I'll have to do? I'll have to first add all these three, find the total population of the city A, and based on that, I'll have to see the income and calculate the per capita income. So that is what is the hierarchical matching. Okay, So I am doing it in hierarchy. I am first adding all the blocks. Then I am finding out the total population and then finally the total income. On the other hand, you have fuzzy boundaries. What are fuzzy boundaries? Fuzzy boundaries are the real boundaries do not match with the boundaries on the map. For example, you have uh, crumb boundaries. And those crop boundaries exactly do not coincide with the agricultural boundaries of the region. Okay, so agriculture boundaries of the region, for example, um, this is the region. 
I have this as agricultural boundaries. Now the crop boundaries can be ending somewhere here. Okay. And this crop boundary can be start and end here. So they do not exactly match. Therefore, they are known as fuzzy boundaries. So this is what is understanding the concept of and relationship of linkage and matching. Now, let's understand the advantages of using GIS. GIS as such has a lot of advantages. What are the primary concerns in this is, I can have a visual impact as we discussed. So you, you can use it in planning. You can use it in urban development. Then you have street inventories or street networking. I can show the major highways, interstates and roads, the city roads and the national roads. Then I can show the various natural resources. I can show various land parcels, the commercial, residential, etc. Then I can use it for business. For example, I am, uh, for example, I am a chain from Walmart, and I want to open a new store of Walmart in City X. Okay, so by GIS, what I can do is I can do a research, operation research, where I can find out uh, what all people would be coming to this region, and this would be the most uh, approachable region for how many people. So if I have three locations, location A, B, and C, I can find out relatively which location would be most approachable by people, and based on that, we can bring a unit of Walmart into that region. So you can look for business establishments. You can find out the functionings of local government. It is used mainly in mapping. So you can use it in risk management, military purposes. You can uh, use it for decision making. As in the case of Walmart, you can decide which unit should come up, where the unit should come up. Then you have the circulation of data. For example, you have done this research in city A. You can give all the positive and negative points to uh, the project in another city where you can say what are the important points here is seeing the mobility of the people, seeing the accessibility where people can go. So based on these points only, you should go for further research. So data can be circulated from one person to another. GPS nowadays, the global positioning system has enhanced the use of GIS a lot. And based on this all, what is very important element of GIS is you can do a prediction. I can predict what should be the best location, what should be the best set of uh, area that should be covered under this GIS project. So these are the various advantages of GIS. Now before we move on to the next lectures and further sessions, the important concept that we need to understand here is the concept of understanding the raster and the vector images. Now what is the raster and a vector image? I have an image here. Now let's focus on this image. I'm zooming this image. But what is happening is, since I have not taken this image as a proper image, what's happening is it's not breaking up. But what would happen with a raster image? If I zoom it out, what would happen is it would break up into pixels. So these are the pixels that you can see. So as explained here, a raster image breaks up into matrix or a square shape. Uh, structures if you zoom out. So when you zoom any image, what happens is it breaks into square shaped grids. Now let's understand vector and raster. So as we understood in this component, you have three points. One is point, one is line, and one is area. So I have a point and vector that would be shown as a square, uh, a matrix in raster. I have a line. It would be shown as a series of rasters. And I have an area. It would be shown as a matrix of images. So these are the various things we try to understand when we move from raster to vector. So vector quantities are mainly used for network analysis. They are much more compact and data is much more efficiently used. In GIS, we technically prefer the vector set of data. Now, <clears throat> there can be various uh, 
formats based on which we can understand the issues. So there can be the first format where you have regularly spaced points. Okay, if that is a box, you have regularly spaced point. That is one form of data you can have. Then you can have randomly irregularly spaced points. The next is you can have data grids or you can have irregular shape polygons and the final is triangulation. We'll understand these concepts in more detail. So in this what happens is you have information based on triangles. So that's the kind of information network you have in triangles. So these are the various types of uh, data depictions in GIS. GIS is related to uh, numerous fields. It's related to geography. It's related to cartography. You have its relations to remote sensing, GIS. Uh, then it's related to operation research. Okay, it's related to database management systems. So these are where all uh, the aspects of GIS integrate into various concepts. In this session, we have talked about the general introduction to GIS. What are data sets? What is the utility of data sets? What are the various kinds of data that they use? What is the difference between spatial data and attribute data? In the next, next session, we will be talking about predictions that can be made from GIS. We will be talking about hierarchical analysis, network analysis, and the various forms of GIS predictions. This was a very fundamental class to understand what is GIS and what are the basic elements that are required to understand the concept of GIS. So anything which can be digitally brought up on the computers and can have an analysis of computers which have uh, computer-based information we can generate, we can have an associated data set to it which can be displayed uh, in the form of visual impacts is what is understood by the concept of GIS. Hope you like this session. Stay tuned for more updates on the topic of GIS. Have a good day ahead.